Microsoft first announced its plans for a new and faster Teams client last year. But while Windows 11 got a new chat app based on the new Teams 2.0 technology, enterprise users are stuck with the Electron version. And there's no sign of a preview coming anytime soon. But earlier this month, Microsoft did talk about performance improvements to the existing clients, which is great. But when will Teams 2.0 arrive for enterprise users? Let's dig deeper. Russell here, Editorial Director of Petri.com in This Life and IT Consultant in a previous one. Now, I think that Teams is a fantastic app. Before I was using it, I was using Slack, which is also great, of course, but I always felt that it was something that was made really with developers in mind. And of course, what Microsoft really excels in is creating those simple and easy to use user interfaces that even people without any kind of technical training can just pick up and use. But one of the problems with Teams from the very get-go was that it was based on Electron. Now, the Electron framework allows Microsoft to develop Teams once and have it run across various different platforms like macOS, Windows, and Linux. So it really cuts down on development time. But the problem with Electron is that it uses a lot of memory. So that means it drains battery life on notebooks and it's slow and clunky. And of course, if you've used Teams, you will have experienced, of course, that it's not the fastest of applications. Some people point out, of course, that Visual Studio Code, another really popular app from Microsoft that's also based on Electron, doesn't receive the same complaints. But in my experience, Visual Studio Code is also a little bit slow and clunky. It's definitely not also the fastest app. Of course, when you load up the Office applications, they're developed, I think, in C. So, you know, they're not based on .NET or anything like that. And of course, they run really fast. Back in April, I think it was, Microsoft also announced that Teams was coming to the Microsoft Store, and we did have some hope maybe at the time that that was going to be the new Teams 2.0 client. But no, in fact, it's the existing Electron app, so nothing really to see there, just in the way that Microsoft is now delivering it. Earlier in June, Microsoft did, however, list a whole load of performance improvements that they've made to the existing Electron Teams app, including 63% faster opening of a new message box, 11.4% faster scrolling through a chat window, and a whole load of other improvements. I won't bore you with all the details. I'll put a link to a description of all of those improvements that you can see for yourself in the description for this video below. But I have actually noticed that, you know, it does seem to be a little bit snappier than it was in the past, especially on my notebook, for instance, it seems to be more power efficient. And that could be, of course, because of some of the improvements Microsoft has made to performance recently. So what about Teams 2.0? So Microsoft announced this last year around the same time that they announced Windows 11. Now, why is Windows 11 important here? Because Windows 11 has a new app called Chat. And what maybe you don't realize is that the technology that's used behind the chat application is Teams 2.0. So this is a new version of Teams that is based on Edge WebView 2. So it's not based on Electron anymore. It's based on the built-in rendering engine that Microsoft uses inside of Windows for its Edge browser, and other applications can take advantage of it. Now, what that means for you and I is that Teams will run natively in Windows and it will run much faster without any of the Electron framework bits and pieces that are required today. So I believe that Microsoft is calling the application in Windows 11 chat because it's at the moment designed just for use with personal Microsoft accounts. So you can't use it and log in with a work or school account. And I think chat is a better name for the application because in your personal life, who wants to use an application called Teams? It sounds very work orientated, of course. So in many ways, you know, we could say, well, Teams 2.0 is already here. You can play around with it today in Windows 11. But of course, enterprise users are still stuck on the Electron version of the app. So what's happening with all of this? If it was all announced a year ago and they also announced that there would be an enterprise version of the app, why haven't we seen any kind of preview up until now? I believe that there will be a Teams 2.0 client for enterprise, but I think Microsoft is taking their time over it for various reasons. 
So if you see the way that the chat application works in Windows 11, it feels very integrated with the operating system and everything kind of works in various different floating windows. So you can get all your contacts in a window, whoever you want to speak to. Then whenever you open a chat or a video call, that opens up in a separate pop-up window. There isn't an application there as such, like we have with the enterprise version of Teams today. And I think that Microsoft might be integrating enterprise teams into Windows 11. So I think that we will get an application, but some of those experiences that feel more integrated with Windows like we see in chat today. So going forwards, you know, you could be able to collaborate in Teams in Windows 11 without actually having to open an app. We also know that Teams app integration is coming with Outlook. We also know about Microsoft Loop, which basically allows you to create components that previously you would have needed to open a particular application. For instance, if you want to create a table uh, with numbers, then you need to open Excel. If you want to create some text, then you need to open Word. But Loop essentially allows you to do all of that to create those individual components without having to open an app. And maybe that's the direction that Microsoft is heading in also with Teams. So as I said, I do believe there will be an app, but I do think that we might get these loop type component experiences like you kind of see in chat today or the start of that work at least happen with Teams. And that would help Microsoft to differentiate the experience on Windows 11. Because as far as I know, at least at the moment, Windows 11 is the only operating system that has this edge view component that is required for the new Teams client. So what's gonna happen with Teams on Mac OS and and Linux? I don't know. Will it carry on using Linux or will Microsoft develop this web view component for those operating systems as well? But whatever you get in Windows 11, I do think it's going to be a slightly different and potentially experience that's always a few steps ahead of what you're going to get on any other platform. So could Teams become the enterprise platform of the future? Because there are already a lot of line of business apps that are already running inside Teams. You know, Microsoft have got their own examples like Viva, for example, and other applications already run inside Teams and integrate with it to a certain extent, like Planner and Lists, of course. And it could be that Teams becomes a platform for the enterprise, much like the browser, especially Chrome, of course, has become a platform really for consumers. Regardless of what Microsoft is doing, I think they've probably got some things up their sleeves that are gonna surprise us a little bit, but we know none of this is really coming with Windows 11 22H2, which is due to drop sometime in the fall. But you know, Microsoft can start adding things to Windows at any point they want really. They can deliver this enterprise client as a download in the store as well, if and when it finally comes. But I think we should expect to see some kind of preview released by the end of 2022, and maybe some other components that integrate with Windows 11, maybe even, you know, widgets and things like that coming at a potentially later date. So if you found this video useful, then please give it a like because that really helps us to distribute it far and wide on YouTube. And if you'd like to see more of these weekly podcasts, then please subscribe to the channel. But before you go, there are a couple of videos that you can see on the screen that you might be interested in watching next. That's it from me for now, and I'll see you next time.